is composed of uh, five sheets and the real core is beyond these five sheets, five cases. Swami would say we are having a raincoat and a coat and a shirt and a banyan, underwear and all that kind of thing. And uh, the real man, the real person is inside all this. So also we have what is called the the food body created by the food that we eat, the material body, the Annamaya Kosha as it is called. And then we have the breath and then we have got the mind and then we have got the intellect and then we have got the inner spring of joy. And even that has got to be transcended in order to real, realize the real core, because in the, in the real reality that is we, there is neither joy nor sorrow. You must transcend joy and sorrow. So you must transcend even joy. That is the real core. Now this Om, it passes, it takes up at the physical stage, the body, the food stage. And then it goes through the mind, the breath and the mind and the intellect and the ānanda. So that when you come to the final uh, intonation or hum in which it ends, we have come to the ānanda stage. And then the silence that follows, even that uh, hum is the real thing. In that silence we will have to discover, in that silence resides divinity, our real divinity. So this Om has got a number of meanings like that. And that is why the essence of all philosophy and thought and spiritual practice is this sound Om. And that's why it is written in a number of scripts on this Gopra. The full moon hall, the Punachandra auditorium, the full moon hall where all the gods that ever man adored do congregate to witness him. You will see under every pillar in that the Punachandra auditorium some form of God sitting petrified, of course, <laughs> sitting, as if sitting, waiting for Baba to come, for the avatar to come. But they know the avatar because they are all forms of God whom men have adored for centuries. 
and they are curious to know who is this divine personality that the world is now adoring. So they are all waiting, waiting, waiting. Each one uh, already appropriating a pillar for himself or herself and awaiting the chance. That is what it appears to me. The full moon hall where all the gods that ever man adored do congregate to witness him. The pillar proclaims what he has come to teach. All faiths are facets of the truth. You can kneel or turn the wheel, guess him formless or with form, or see him, serve him in man and beast and plant. You can even worship a plant, a tulsi or a tree as they do near that other gate. You've got a tree there which is worshipped. They we say Vishnu resides in your trunk, Brahma resides in your root, Shiva resides in your fruit. So we invoke all, they do that. God is really in the tree. Without God the tree can't grow. God resides in the worm. God resides in the microbe. God resides in the virus. God resides everywhere. Man, bird, beast, tree, plant. And therefore you can serve him in a plant or in a tree or in a bird. Sai is the journey's end, whichever path you tread. He is the guide, the God, the goal. The Nilayam is the lab where the alchemist turns leaden hearts to Bangaru. Formerly the alchemist used to convert lead into gold. Bangaru is gold. And Baba's fondest expression is Bangaru, so far as we are concerned. Once it happened that uh, I got into some trouble. Excuse me, keep it confidential, please. <laughs> <laughs> Something happened and uh, Baba wanted to teach me a lesson and therefore he, he didn't keep me away but he, he didn't uh, notice me or talk to me or uh, recognize me at all as being alive and before him. <laughs> now that is the worst punishment that you can have, the worst test, the hottest crucible into which you can be put. You are there right before him, standing near the wall and as if you are simply brick and mortar and nothing else. <laughs> and he will pass up and down a number of times and you may plead Swami, 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 a number of times, but he is deaf to all your appeals. Like that it went on for about 10 days, 12 days, and it was a terrible experience. And then one day, <coughs> when I couldn't bear it any longer, so I broke down and then Swami said, ah, what is all this? There's nothing. Go. <laughs> That was something. So, of course, Swami said, there's nothing, why are you worrying like this? No, 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 nothing. Go, go, he said. Now, of course, it was satisfactory. The last he had spoken to me, recognized me, and uh, said at least some things. But I wasn't quite pleased. Anyway, I got down the steps and bhajan was going on. So I moved right up to this Gopuram, because there was no Gopuram then, but it came up so far as that. And then I poured out all my sorrow through my eyes. And then uh, I went back. And Baba had not yet uh, finished the bhajan and gone up. So I somehow smuggled myself into that room, what is called the interview room. So that uh, when he comes and tries to go up, 
he could see me in the game with a melancholy face. <laughs> but uh, he didn't notice me at all. He, was, he simply went up and I followed him the steps. Then I stood before him. And then he was surprised that this fellow is still having a melancholy face. I had spoken to him and I asked him to go. Why is he coming up again? So he said, why? What's the matter? Why again? Why still? Then I said, Swami, you didn't pat me on the back and, and say Bangaru. <laughs> Bangaru means cancelling of all that has happened. New chapter. <laughs> and Swami took compassion on me. And he said, Come, come near. And then a big whack on my back. <laughs> <laughs> and ah, oh Bangar. And Bangar. So that Bangaru is a is a word that we long to earn from him. So leaden heart. My heart, for example. He turns leaden hearts into Bangaru. It is an ashram where the Sadguru brings back to life the drooping and the dead. Because many of us are dead. Dead to generosity, dead to love, dead to compassion. We are alive, of course, but we are dead to the clamor of the poor, to the groans of the sick. We are dead. We don't hear. Or the drooping and the dead. These people, his palm, we know, has the balm. His palm has the balm for the drooping and the dead. It is a workshop. It is a laboratory. This is an ashram. This is a workshop where he sets aright all broken hearts. They come here. And he sets aright and mends the damaged mind. It is a school. That is why we, it, the school became a university. It started as a school. And even now the university is a part of this school, it's an extension of this school. It's a school where we learn a few more D's. In the alphabet we have got only one D. But Baba teaches us three D's. Duty, devotion and discipline. Three D's. So when we come to A, B, C, D, then Swami says, no, wait, 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 there are two more D's. Three days in this alphabet, in this school. And extra F's, you've got four F's here, in Atmic alphabet, where arithmetic is upside down. In this school, you learn arithmetic upside down, <laughs> where three minus one is one. <laughs> that is, Swami says, you've got man, and the creation or nature and God. <coughs> now this creation and nature is only an extension of our mind. It is our mind that has conceived of all this. Mentalism it is called. And when you remove the creation, the illusion of the world, there is only God. And who is God? That is also your creation. You are part of God. I am, I am God and you are God. So you are in me and I am in you. So there is only one. So three minus one, if you take away the creation, you become only one. A big metaphysical arithmetic. <laughs> and I plus I plus I plus I plus 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 plus. All of you, each one of you calls yourself I. No, every, all these I plus 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 and I plus I plus I plus I add up to single I, not four or forty or fifty. All are parts of God, therefore 
That is the arithmetic that we learn here. Now, <coughs> so these are for people who are coming for the first time. Take your seat on the darshan line and fold your palms and minds. You've got to fold not only the palms, that is physical exercise. One, two, one, two. Physical exercise. Fold your minds. Folding the palm is the indication. These are the five sense organs and these are the five organs of action, organs of perception. And these five put together and offered to whatever we receive through the senses, whatever we act through the organs of action, we offer to you. That is why Baba says these minds are folded, not merely palms. Be that you, when you sit in the darshan line, be that you to hate and pride, farewell to envy, greed. Picture his lovely form and pray for darshan, sparshan, touching and sambhashan that he might utter a word or two to you. Three blessings he has come to give. Because <coughs> Swami says that these three blessings, <coughs> seeing, touching and hearing his voice, he has come to give that. So there is an old story which he tells us, you know, during the days of Rama, he killed a large number of demons, poor things. And at last they clamored and said, what is, you, you have uh, destroyed our lives, but, and we have only obeyed our master Ravana and we fought for him so loyally and he died in your hands. So what is going to happen to us? <coughs> you must save us now. And then it seems Rama said, because it's all a joke, more or less. <laughs> Swami enjoys jokes. So he said to those demons, Ah, you come during the Kali age. I will be coming. <laughs> and it is at that invitation that we all come. <laughs> And you will be saved then. You require, it seems he told those demons, you require three, triple treatment. Some, some rishis and others, they simply saw, they had darshan and they were saved. Some had sparshan and they were saved. Some heard the voice and they were saved. But you are such a deep-rooted uh, wickedness in you that uh, come at that time and I'll give you all three, internal medicine, external application and uh, control of diet and other things. So these three he has come to give. In one poem that he sang before one of his discourses, he mentioned this. I have come because I have promised the demons that I will <laughs> save them again. <laughs> anyway, it is good that we don't remember our past. <laughs> Forgetting is a great gift given by God to us. And then, lo, there he, there he is, the orange robe, the flash, the flame, the fragrant breeze, sunlit, hallow hair, fulfillment of every golden dream, all the gods in sai form, grace, majesty, joy and charm. This is Shiva Shakti, Krishna, Ram, Jehovah, Buddha, Jesus Christ. Clasp those lotus feet. Hold the softness of the touch. It will keep you soft forevermore. His feet are so soft. Hold the softness of the touch. 
you touch it, it is so soft. Don't uh, allow it to, that feeling of softness, don't allow it to escape you. Hold on to it. Keep it in your heart. Then what will happen to your heart? It will soften your heart also. It will keep you soft forevermore. You won't be a hard-hearted person. Once you feel the softness of those feet, that's why he attaches so much importance to sparsan, the touch. Very often he comes before a person and says, ah, chase ko, all right, have it. So he offers the feet so that you might get soft in the heart. Watch, his finger bids you rise, bids you wake, because you are dozing. <laughs> Even though you may be alert, it is dozing that you are doing. You are not fully alert. You are not fully alert. You are simply intoxicated with uh, worldly things. <coughs> you are not alert to your responsibility, alert to your duty. You don't awake to your real self. The call is there. You are not awake. You don't hear it. That's why in the Purushas it is said, Uttishta, get up, Jagrata, away, and go to the person who will lead you. So watch his finger, bid you wake. You are chosen. Ah, you are chosen. Swami is going to give you the interview. You are chosen, dear child. Follow him. <coughs> Blessed is the day, the hour. You will be born anew. What is going to happen to you is, you will be born anew. This, up to this moment, you had some type of life. A new life is going to begin for you. You will be born anew. And who you are, he... And then what happens inside the interview room, there is a kind of the workshop. You have entered the workshop and Swami says, you come here merely as a kind of a vintage car, very much damaged, you won't proceed at all. And Swami says, I'll change the engine, I'll change the brake. Brake we haven't got at all. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody complained, what, your brake is not working, but that doesn't matter, I've got a good horn. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us operate only on horns <laughs> and no brake. So this uh, workshop, he puts the brake, he puts the, the everything else and then he fills all the tires and makes the spring quite all right and the balance and then paints new and then ah, it moves out of the workshop fresh, new, capable of journeying throughout life happily and without any danger. That is, that is once what he explained his role to be. So let us see what happens to us when we go and yield ourselves to him. He spring cleans he spring cleans the junk that clutters the brain and who you are and why is clear in the light. He dots his vibhuti on ajna spot. This is according to yoga, very important uh, place in the Kundalini yoga. Ajna chakra it is called. It is the headquarters of the commander in chief who gives all the orders for the spiritual powers to arouse. And he touches that and puts himself on it. That is to say his vibhuti, which is himself. Unveils the eye. Unveils the eye. We have all got veils in the eye. And our eyes sees people as different. We see only the color we see only the religion, we see only the economic condition, we see only the poverty, we see people as different. Your eye has got to be cured. 
unveils the eye, afflicted with multiple sight. Our eyes have got multiple sight. They have got the unified sight. No, multiple. They see people as different, distinct, apart, afar. He laughs. He laughs. Who else has got the right to laugh? Because we are all such absurdities going around. He laughs to find you deaf. Though the ear is near and clear. Deaf to what? To the mantram of the nose. You see, the nose is repeating a mantra. That's the purpose of the nose, not to poke into other people's affairs. <laughs> the breath, so to say, not the nose, of course, is a breathing instrument. And it utters a mantra. When he breathes in, so hum, so hum, so hum. That is the mantra that the nose repeats. He, I, he, I, he, I, he, I, he, I, so hum. This om is only a purification of that soham. Soham, that is the mantra. And what does it mean? I am not Kasturi, I am He. I am not Mr. Harvey, I am He. No, 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 don't identify me with uh, the label that somebody has attached to this uh, mass of vegetarian or non-vegetarian uh, <laughs> flesh that I carry. No, I am not this, I am He, I am He, I have come from Him, I must go back to Him, I am He, I am He. <laughs> No, you are a professor? No, I am he. You are a miserable chap? No, I am he. You are a beggar? You are a beggar? No, I am he. You are an emperor? No, I am he. Everyone is he. So hum, so hum. Don't lure me. Don't dishonor me. Don't uh, devalue me. That is the mantra that with which the child arrives. The first breath of the child the last breath of the man who dies, even when a man is murdering another, suppose a man is engaged in suffocating and killing another, the breath goes on repeating him at that time, Hello, what are you doing? You are he, you are he. In the night, deep sleep, you don't know who you are, you don't know where you are, but the breath is teaching you this lesson from birth to death it has been telling you, I am He, I am He, I must be worthy of Him, I must reach Him, I must go back to Him, I am sorry I came away from Him. That is the message. And Baba says, what is this? I have kept the ear so near the nose so that it can hear. <laughs> To the mantra of the nose, the breath, so hum, so hum, I am he, I am he, and you are not hearing it. Then he examines the tongue. Every doctor examines the tongue. Put out your tongue, and then we put it out, it is so, it is so long. <laughs> the mouth can't contain it. Examines the tongue so thick with spite, and it's such thickness, overgrowth upon the tongue, spite, spite against others. Thick with spite prescribes a mixture of dhyan and jap to cure the tongue. He gives the throat the achut touch. They say throat touch, <coughs> some syrup of achut, that is to say God, and binds the lips with a not so much. 
To every person he says, no, no, not so much. Don't talk so much. Don't talk so much. He doesn't say don't talk at all, but not so much. You say I speak only, say, twenty words per minute. No, not so much. Then a person says I speak two hundred words a minute. Not so much. Not so much. Try to reduce. Reduce it. Ten words a minute? Not so much. <laughs> Even that is too much, so not so much. He gives the armor to the covered chest, and with a twinkle of an eye, he wills away your wayward ways. So you come out of the interview room, repaired like this, and ready for speedier, safer journey. He answers every anguish call, the SOS from shipwrecked passengers, shipwrecked voyagers. Now it doesn't mean that uh, it's only when you get into the interview room that you can contact him. Anywhere. He answers every anguish call, <coughs> the SOS. Same, oh Sai, that is the SOS. <laughs> if you look in the dictionary, you will find save our souls. That is the last emergency call that every ship has got to make in order to call other people to help. But this is save, oh Sai, save, oh Sai, from shipwrecked voyagers. All of us are voyaging in the ocean of worldly life and we are shipwrecked. And we say, Sai, whatever the hour, however faint the cry, Sai need not travel far, he is ever at your door. By your side, behind, before. Because Swami says, in Telugu it is very pleasant to hear him say that. Jentane, ventane, intane, kantane, untang. Ah, how we would like him to say that and hear it. Jantane, ventane, kantane, untan. Intane, I forgot. So, jantane, that is, I'll be with you jointly. Joint and janta. I'll be ventane, behind you. Intane, I'll be in your house. Kantane, I'll be right before your eyes. Untanu, I will be always. So I am before you, beside you, behind you. If it's before your eyes, in your home, you, you bolt your door and say, ah, there is now nobody to disturb me, but he is there to disturb you. <laughs> In infinite grace he makes us aware of the melody vibrant in the stone. The melody vibrant in the stone. A stone is not simply a stone. Sermons in stones and books and running brooks. Every stone has got a sermon. Every stone is vibrating with the divine power. And you know the story. He wanted a geologist to pick up a stone, a rock, and he said, what does it contain? And he began to give a lecture on geology, on petrology, <laughs> and what it contained. And then he said, no, no, no. What is uh, He said it contains some silicon and this and that. What is silicon? And then he said, yes, silicon is a, a bundle of uh, molecules and atoms, silicon atom. And what is its atom? It contains, of course, some nucleon or neutron or proton or meson or they have not yet discovered how many more things there are there. And then he said, no. And what is inside that? What is inside that? I can go only as far as that. And then Swami, and then there was Krishna with the flute. So this melody vibrant in the stone. <coughs> Every stone sings the glory of God. Flute, Krishna's flute. If only you have got the ear, place a stone in your ear and you will hear Krishna's flute. You will hear the Lord's melody in your ear. As a matter of fact, when he was a little boy, little boy, Swami, 
some people, because he was talking of Krishna, and some people, do you want to hear Krishna's flute? Swami said, and then said, come, lay your head on my chest, ah, your ear, paste your ear on my chest. And they heard Krishna's flute. The mother heard the Krishna's flute, placing her head on the son's chest. So in infinite grace he makes us aware of the cross that bleeds in every blade. Every blade of grass has got its crucifixion, has got its resurrection. It is crucified when it fades. It is resurrected when it becomes green again. And you know the story of Hislop's cross given by simply putting together two blades of grass. He showers the holy ash, his signs and wonders in all his million homes. Don't think it is your home, in all his million homes. Wherever he shows a sign or wonder, it is his home, not your home. Some people ask Swami, Swami, you must, when you come to Delhi, you must come to my, my place. Oh, you have got a place? <laughs> is that your place? Uh, no, Swami, it is, excuse me, it is our place. <laughs> oh, half and half. <laughs> no, Swami, it is your place. Then why should you invite me? <laughs> what right have you to invite me to my place? <laughs> that is what Swami says. So every home is his home. In his million homes, this is my calling card, he says. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours. His hands and feet his eye and voice, they girdle the cosmic sphere. Then, why need we hurry and scurry from east to west and west to east, over hill and dale and sea and sand, in search of the lotus feet? They are here, within reach of every Longing hand, longing hand. That doesn't mean that your hand must become long. <laughs> your mind must long. As a matter of fact, once Swami, some person he called for the interview room, and then uh, he was just about to leave, and then he said, "Ah, he was doing." Namaskar, touching his feet. Then he said, ah, anyway, now that you are here, take the measurement and go. <coughs> measurement? Yes. See, you find out the space which is required for me to stand between the two feet. How much space is required for me to stand comfortably? To measure and then go. Why, Swami? Are you, what do you do in your shrine room? You put your hands too close and then you pray, Swami, come before me so that I can touch your feet. And you keep your hands so close. And it is difficult for me to <laughs> stand at that place. Swami said that. How can I stand in that limited space that you give between? I can't stand upon your hands. I don't want to hurt you. So you please keep your hands as a part as necessary. So take the measurement and go. Now, if Swami is going to give you the touch of His feet, wherever you are, why hurry and scurry from east to west and west to east, over hill and dale and sea and sand in such a little feet? They are here, within reach of every longing hand. Did He not sing? The first ever song, Manasa Bhajare Guru Charan. Worship the feet of the Guru in your mind. 
let us install them in the inmost shrine, those feet, and pray, Sai, my Lord, grant me the vision of thy kingdom within me. Grant me the vision of thy kingdom within me. Assign me the work that is worship for thee. Whatever work is worship for thee, and what work shall I do as worship for thee? I remember I was a professor in the university and I was to retire within about three months. So I went in search of Swami and he was somewhere in Madras. So I went there and told him, Swami, three months more this service in the university. Afterwards, I come to you, your service. And he said, what? I thought you were a wise chap, <laughs> reasonable chap. Huh. And you claim to be a professor. My ego was punctured. <laughs> Do you make a distinction between university service and my service? Is that not my university? Is that not my service? What is it that you are talking? Swami service, as if it is different, and university service, as if it, that is different. Wherever you are, it is my service. The whole world is mine. And every one of you is my servant, doing my duty, that is, that I have assigned to you. <coughs> now that opened my eyes. Of course, I, my eyes wide open at that time also. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so, grant me the vision of, the, of thy kingdom within me. Assign me the work that is worship for thee. Whatever work you give, there is no high or low. <clears throat> Lead me to those who heed thy word. Satsang. Don't put me in the midst of people who will discourage me. Lead me to those who heed thy word and pine for thee. What is a devotee? Is pine for him. Reveal thy charm wherever I cast my eye. Wherever I cast my eye, let me only see thy charm. Let me not see the ugliness. Because there is nothing ugly, because everywhere you are, and therefore there is only beauty everywhere. It is my prejudice that makes me feel that it is ugly. <coughs> and Swami fulfilled this one desire. Let me, Swami, let this, thy little self, merge in thee. Jai Sai Ram. Now, I will read it from the beginning once, so that uh, you may get the feel of it. <coughs> now you can do your worst. <laughs> I started my worst. <coughs> One moment, Professor, please. <laughs> That is the defect of becoming slaves of machines. <laughs> Listen to me, ye children of God, said the Vedic sage centuries ago. I am longing to tell of a vision I had, a thousand suns, a feeble flash, his suffragans, I saw. Listen for a while, same good news I bring. The God has come again, the Satchidanand Supreme. 
truth is his name love his breath dharma his voice his presence peace he has come for you and me and all that lives bird and beast our kith and kin each of us a role in his eternal play no man has heard a tale so true it is satyam shivam sundaram truth goodness beauty all three no man has sung a song so sweet it is geeta ganga gayatri he is nudging me to sing of him but it is he who sings through me he is urging me urging you to listen to me but i know it is he who is hearing me he has come as man to liberate man in varied climes and times when mankind wailed lead kindly light he has come again with the lamp of love come all come all who thirst for rest come all who pine for paradise on earth come all who seek relief from grief ask him to allay the pain loosen the chain uproot the parasites that suck you dry bring bring disaster disease distress defeat and pile them at his feet then light of foot and gay of heart skip along the pilgrim road happy hopping free a ring of hills so brown and blue the holy stream chitravati it is sacred puttaparthi a board of sanatana sarathi prashanti nilayam jerusalem both words mean the same to every hungry soul angels hover over the silver door devas crowd around the golden domes the gopuram the gopuram it leads your eye up and up and up and up to omnipotent o the full moon hall where all the gods that ever man adored do congregate to welcome him the pillar proclaims what he has come to teach all faiths are facets of the truth you can kneel or turn a wheel guess him formless or with form or see him serve him in man and beast and plant sai is the journey's end whichever path you tread he is the guide the goal the god this nilayam is the lab where the alchemist turns leaden hearts into bangaru it is an ashram where the sadguru brings back to life the drooping and the dead his palm we know has the balm it is a workshop where he sets right all broken hearts and mends the damaged mind it is a school where we learn a few more d's and extra f's in atmic alphabet 3 minus 1 is 1 arithmetic is upside down and i plus i plus i plus i adds up to single i not 4 take your seat on the darshan line and four 
hold your palms and minds. Bidden you to hate and pride, farewell to envy, greed. Picture him, his lovely form, and pray for darshan, sparshan, sambhashan. Three blessings he has come to give. Lo, there he is, the orange robe, the flash, the flame, the fragrant breeze, sunlit, hello hair, fulfillment of every golden dream, all the gods in sai form, grace, majesty, joy and charm. This is Shiva Shakti, Krishna, Ram, Jehovah, Buddha, Jesus Christ. Clasp those lotus feet, hold the softness of the touch. It will keep you soft forevermore. Watch. His finger bids you wake. You are chosen, dear child. Follow him. Blessed is the day, the hour. You will be born anew. He spring cleans the junk that clutters the brain. And who you are and why is clear in the light. He dots his vibhuti on ajna spot, unveils the eye afflicted with multiple sight. He laughs to find you deaf, though the ear is near and clear to the mantram of the nose, the breath. So hum, so hum, I am he. I am He, I am He. He examines the tongue, so thick with spite, prescribes a mixture of dhyan and jap. He gives the throat the acute touch and binds your lips with a not so much, not so much. He takes the load from <coughs> off your back, says, I am here to bear, you move on. He gives an armor to the covered chest and with the twinkle of an eye he wills away, he wills away your wavered ways. He answers every anguish call, the SOS from shipwrecked voyagers. Whatever the hour, however faint the cry, Sai need not travel far, he is ever at your door. By your side, behind, before, doubt, doubt, he answers, lock, lock, he enters, decry, he pats you, defy, he stays, defy, he stays. He knows all we have been and are and what we yet shall be. In infinite grace he makes us aware of the melody vibrant in the stone, of the cross that bleeds in every blade. He showers the holy ash, his signs and wonders in all his million homes. This is my calling card, he says. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours, he says. His hands and feet, his eye and voice, they girdle the cosmic sphere. Then why need we hurry and scurry from east to west and west to east, over hill and dale and sea and sand in search of the lotus feet? <coughs> They are here, within reach of every longing hand. Did you not sing the first ever song, Manasa Bhajare Guru Charana? Worship the Guru's feet in the mind. Let us install him in the innermost shrine and pray. Let us pray, Sai, my Lord. Grant me the vision of thy kingdom within me. Assign me the work that is worship for thee. Lead me 
to those who heed thy word and pine for thee. Reveal thy charm wherever I cast my eye. And Swami, fulfill this one desire. Let me, Swami, let this thy little self merge in thee, merge in thee. Jai Sairam. Jai Sairam.